You're going to love the concept of starting a signature program that will create residual income for your studio or fitness facility. Jessica Maurer, today's industry expert on the Fitness Business Podcast, walks us through the steps of how to start this process and why having a signature program is so important. Let's hear it. What's your favorite episode? Is it a sales episode, a leadership episode, or maybe it's one of our many group fitness episodes like today's? Whichever one it is, we would love for you to share a review on your social media page. Plus, if you're bragging about a particular guest, I think the guest would love to know. Now, don't forget to tag us so we can tell the whole world. Now, I know, what if you're thinking, well, Dory, there are just way too many awesome episodes for me to pick just one. All right, then how about heading to iTunes to write a review? The voice of our fitness business podcast family is important to us. We want to hear from you. This is Dory Nugent, your host of the Fitness Business Podcast, and today our guest, Jessica Maurer, will fill you in on the benefits of creating a signature program for your fitness department. Jessica has designed and helped create a multitude of signature programs for a variety of fitness clubs, and she's here today as our industry expert to help you do the same. Don't hit the pause button or you will miss the most valuable 30 minutes of your day. We will hear from Jessica in less than two minutes. First, a huge thank you to One Fit Stop for supporting our show. One Fit Stop is modern fitness studio software built for the growing multi-location studio, providing scheduling, client management, programming, payment collection tools, and more that will set your business up to grow, grow, grow. To find out more, go to onefitstop.com or click on the link in today's show notes. Fitness Business Podcast family, you can check out One Fit Stop at www.onefitstop.com. Get your pen ready now for Keep Me's Fit Bizpiration. What are your top three tips to launching your own signature program in your business? Tip number one, you got to know what fish that you're fishing for. You need to know where they live and what kind of bait. So in other words, you need to pinpoint your target demographic to figure out their pain points because that will lead you into tip number two. You need to figure out where your expertise crosses over with your fish's pain points. So if you think about it in terms of hands, when you interlace your fingers together, that's how your signature program should feel. Like you have all of the answers to all of the questions that your target demographic have. And then tip number three is figuring out what puzzle you want to put forth in your program and what are all of the puzzle pieces in order to make that a complete picture keeping in mind that your puzzle should speak specifically to your target demographic and your puzzle pieces should speak directly towards your expertise and how you can be the one to guide them on this journey. Next week, I interview Scott Ramage, the owner of VAs for Gym, and we talk about saving time and money with investing in a virtual assistant. After this week's full interview, I'll introduce you to Scott and you'll hear why you need to come back to hear his interview. Are you interested in increasing your center's income and your trainer's income from small group training? Tribe Team Training is the new way to get more members engaged in small group training and paying extra. Click the Tribe Team Training link in the show notes or go to tribeteamtraining.com.au forward slash podcast for your free formula to see how much income you can make from small group training. Let's transition into this week's interview with Jessica Maurer. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Fitness Business Podcast. Today, my guest is Jessica Maurer. She's our industry expert, and she's going to talk about your signature program that will drive profits. Jessica, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, this is your first time on the podcast. That is true. I've been a long-term listener, but first-time guest. 
<laughs> well, fantastic. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. We're going to get started right away. We're talking about signature programs. And I'm going to ask you, what is a signature program? A signature program is the place where you and your expertise overlap with your target demographics needs. It's a program that answers exactly what those target market people are Googling at 2 a.m. in the morning and allows for you to align with what they need and what you can provide. Okay. And how about maybe you could tell all of our listeners out there, what are the key components for a signature program? You really want to make sure that you replicate this experience. So in other words, you want to create a program that has empty buckets for you to put in content and information so that it's an easy system for you to lather, rinse, and repeat. Take everything out of the buckets, put new information in the buckets, and create a totally new experience based on the same structure and the same skeleton that you'd already created. All right. So you kind of said this lather, rinse, and repeat. Could you just dive into that a little bit further and just maybe tell our listeners what do you mean by that? Sure. So when you're creating a program, and this can be a class, a personal training session, or something more of like a small group training boot camp, whatever you're creating, you need to figure out the structure first. And the solid structure then allows for you to create this idea of a plug and play system. Once you've determined what puzzle pieces you need in order to build your structure to create this full picture of how you can answer the needs of your target demographic, then you can start to take information and plug it into that puzzle piece area. I like to think of it in terms of buckets. So I know that I need a fitness bucket. I know I need a nutrition bucket and I know I'm going to need a lifestyle or habit changing bucket. And what I put into those buckets is going to help me build the signature program. Everything that goes in is really geared towards answering the pain points of my target demographic. All right. And how would you say you determine if there is a market for your program? So I don't think that that is actually possible. Instead, I think that you determine the program is right for your market. So what do I mean by that? I, I'm not a fisherman, but my husband is. And he always tells me before he goes to fish that he needs to know what fish he's searching for before he determines what body of water to go to and what bait to use. So it's the same process when we start to think about target demographic. We need to know what fish we're looking for so we know exactly where they live and what they need. And that means that you're pinpointing who you want to work with. And that allows for you to really expand upon their pain points. A pain point is what are they Googling at 2 a.m.? If you were an infomercial, what would you need to have in order to have the client look to you as a trusted resource and be willing to buy? So you have to pinpoint your market then build your program around the pain points of that target demographic. So everything that you are putting forward in your signature program answers a question, but those answers that you are giving ties into what you are the expert in. Your personality, your education, what you know and what you love should be tied in by answering the questions that your target demographic is Googling again at 2 a.m. Well, I absolutely love the fishing analogy. <laughs> I totally can relate coming from a, a, uh, a dad that was an avid fisherman um, and he would say the same exact thing. So I like that hats off to your husband on that one. <laughs> so I'm going to keep going here with the questions. Cause I really like the role that we're on. And I'm going to ask you how important is the name to the program and the brand for the program? So right now we live in a society of instant gratification People are not interested in reading into secret or witty or hidden names behind what you're naming your program. And you could spend all of your time and your effort and your energy coming up with the wittiest, funniest, great name. But if they don't understand within the three seconds it takes to read the title of your program, they're not going to investigate further. So the name is very important when you're naming your class or your personal training sessions or your boot camps. It needs to be something that they can understand in that instant gratification moment, keeping in mind that for the most part, people ingest their media on a phone. So it's got to be something that they can see very quickly on Facebook or Instagram and know exactly what it is. In terms of making it match your business and your brand, I think it's really important to remember that consumers purchase based on the amount of trust and credibility and loyalty they have to you as a fitness professional, whether that's you as a personality 
or that's you as a business. And what we know is that dependability builds loyalty. So if you're really wanting to build a loyal following who will come and follow you through your offerings, through your sales cycles, and join you in business, then we need to make sure that we are building a loyal brand through our colors, through our fonts, through our stylization. Again, thinking back to instant gratification, they're scrolling. They need to know immediately And when they come up to a picture on Instagram, it's you, it's your business. You've offered valuable content to them prior. So they're going to stop and pay attention to what you have to say because they're already trying to find you as that trusted, credible expert in the field. So Jessica, honestly, that answer, you had so much good information in that one answer. I feel like we could just end the podcast right here. You have so much good information there. So it's funny because as you're talking about this, it made me flash back to when I was a young group fitness director. I totally was obsessed with coming up with cool, funky, savvy names. Like I prided myself on that. Do you know how long it took me to realize like, And how many answers I had to give on, well, what do you mean? What's this class? Because I would have this like really cool, funky name, but nobody knew what it was. So towards the end of my group fitness career, I started just getting like very basic, very plain and they got it. They understood exactly what it was. No more create. And there was no more creativity. Yes. Keep it simple. And we as fitness professionals, we are a very weird bunch, whether we're group fitness or personal training or in management, we think fitness is fun. We are the very small population that thinks fitness is fun. That's the reason we got into fitness, right? Is because we think this is a great time, but we know looking at statistics that most of the other people in the world don't agree with us. So when we think we're coming up with extremely witty names or super complex choreography, that's going to blow them away they don't notice because they're not on the same page as us. (laughs) They're not quite into the same amount of hobby of fitness as we are as fitness professionals. I'm going to keep moving on here because we have so many great questions that I know our listeners want me to ask you. So my next one is, should your signature program be designed to generate new sales or to upsell to current members? So I think you can have a couple of different signature programs. I think that the offers that you have for your business should be like a highway system. We used to think about offers and sales cycles in terms of a funnel where you dump a lot of people in at the top and very few get to the bottom or even in reverse of a mountain work. There's a ton at the foundation, but very few rise to the top. Instead, what we've learned over the last few years with technology advancements is it's more of Consumers should be able to come in and out of your business whenever they want. That means that the new mom who's breastfeeding at 4 a.m. in the morning should be able to buy your service and not have to show up at your actual brick and mortar location in order to purchase anything. So your offerings need to answer to the people who prefer digital, the people who prefer virtual, the people who prefer live. And as many times as you can offer different things to people, the more you're going to be able to serve your clientele. Now, if we go back a little bit, I mentioned before that consumers purchase based on trust and credibility and loyalty, and that goes for your signature program as well. If you're creating something that's an eight-week program that has so much value and so much time and effort and energy that you're putting into it, it's going to be a high-ticket item. That means the consumer who's going to be interested in it has to trust you a lot. They've got to already be in the trenches with you, if they're willing to put that much time, effort, and energy back into a program that you've created for that much amount of money. So I think that that one is more of the value add to your current customers, your current clientele. However, if you create something that's more uh, systematic or automatic, where it's delivered by an email system, it's delivered by a video on demand system, it's delivered in a group where you can pre-schedule and get out of it, and you're not spending so much time and effort on the participants, you're instead spending time on like maybe the scheduling and the creation, but not necessarily hand-holding with people, then you have a lower price point. Because it's going to require less time and effort for them as well, that means you have a lower level of trust and needed in order to get them into this program. So I think that the signature programs that you create where you can put together your system, decide on your buckets, fill your buckets with different pieces of information for each quote unquote session, 
so that you're always creating a new, new and unique experience that people want to come back and take again, then really and truly you can create multiple ways for people to come into your business. Okay. So I absolutely love the fact that you refer to it as signature program. I think it just has a nice elegance to it. Sounds very classy, very prestigious. I love that. I think you might have touched base on this a little bit already, but I'm going to re-ask this question in the sense of what are the first steps to creating a signature program? I think the first thing you have to do is decide your base. And your base, it goes back to the idea that we've all been focusing on for the last few years is why do you do what you do? Um, not only why do you do what you do and who do you want to serve, but also you need to start thinking about the base of the program itself. Where are these people going to meet and interact? Is there a live location aspect to it or is it all online? Once you figure out your locational aspect, then you can go to equipment. Okay, if everyone's coming to your studio, then you have a lot more equipment that you can use within your program. If you're going to someone's house, then there's a lot less equipment probably at your disposal. And you've got to think about, okay, this is going to be a digital or a virtual, then I'm going to be delivering content that people can do at their house. And that takes down the equipment that you can use even more. So figuring out your base of why are you doing it? Who are you speaking to? Where are you going to do it? And what are you going to use? Is definitely your first step. Now, from there, you can go to what we were talking about earlier. We figure out those puzzle pieces of what all actually ties in. And if you're focused on the fitness part, you know, go through and think about what is your typical warm up? Does it have five different movement styles that you can create five different movement buckets for? What does the meat of it look like? What is the middle of class? Is it all cardio based that goes between high and low intervals? Is it between a cardio and a strength move and then a core movement? What is the structure itself of the class? And then put together your cool down in a similar way. You can do that as a personal trainer and figure out the actual puzzle pieces that make the fitness component. On top of the fitness component, you get to decide, okay, well, what other wellness components am I adding into this and how do I deliver it? And that goes back into the idea of your baseline of what is my location? Where am I going to deliver this content? From there, you get to decorate it. That's the best part. Once you have the skeleton, then you get to decorate, put all your icing and your sprinkles on top of your cupcake. And you get to decide, okay, well, now I have these buckets. I know where I'm teaching. I know who I'm teaching to and with what. Now what goes in the buckets? What goes into my warm-up? What's going into my email blast? What, what recipes are going into my meatless Monday recipes or what fun Friday fact am I going to share in the group? So then that gets to be the fun part. Once you get the structure, once you get the base, then you get to decorate. And that's always the best part of a signature program. Okay. So I love how you've got, we've got the base, we've got the meat, and then we're going to decorate it. <laughs> so after we get through those three basic steps, what would you say, like how much time would you allow for kind of building up the program and then launching it? I love analogies and metaphors. I don't know if that's come across yet or not, but everything has to do with how it relates to another item. And I like to, I always tell my clients, it depends on the train you're on. Because if your train is just at the station and it's about to take off, well, a train always takes a while to build up momentum in order to leave the station. It's going to take you a little while to get up and rolling to figure out your base, your why, your who, how to build the program around your target demographics pain points, and then starting to figure out all the puzzle pieces that are needed in order to create this program. But if your train's already moving, You've already got this foundation set. You know who you're speaking to. You already have an idea and your train is moving and keep going with that momentum. It's going to go much faster once you have figured all of those steps out. Okay, Jessica, seriously, you need to write a book on analogies. <laughs> Everything in my, all of my lectures, I, I talk about cupcakes and fish and, <laughs> and trains, all kinds of things, because it makes, it puts a visualization in your head and you walk away and you remember it much more than, than just, you know, being told A, B, and C. Very true. Very true. So talking about the signature programs, and I, I mean, you've done a very nice job uh, being very thorough and explaining everything. Maybe one more analogy, or maybe it's not an analogy, but could you give us some examples of clubs, studios, or trainers who have developed a signature brand and the results that they have seen? 
Yeah, absolutely. So one of my favorite clients, I actually work with a studio in New York City and they're creating a dance format. So we wanted to figure out first and foremost, okay, this is, is this only fitness where they come live or is there going to be an online component? Is there a community component? So we went into this um, this studio and it was, okay, it's just a fitness class. You have to come live. You have to attend. So then we figured out their puzzle pieces. What does a warm up look like? What does the body of the class look like? What does the cool down look like? Once we had those buckets, we could sit down and create all of the dance moves that fit in to their warm up, all of the dance moves and dance songs and choreography that fit into the middle of class and to the end. When it came down for their teachers to get ready for class, they could easily say, okay, I'm going to take warm up M. I'm going to take the body of the class G and I'm going to take cool down Z. And this is going to be my class for the day. And it's just plugged and play. And the class was so popular that they quickly took that, which took us a while to get built because their train was at the station. So once the train was moving, there were so many people who said, this class has changed my life. I want more. And we turned it into a further developed program where we added a community connection into it to where you came for eight weeks, you experienced the same dance class, but we added on to the choreography. And there was this community aspect afterwards where we had a group of women who wanted to talk about hydration and nutrition and behavioral lifestyle. And so we slotted, okay, this is what we're going to talk about Mondays. This is Wednesdays. This is Fridays. And once you have that bucket, you can just list out all of the things you want to share, all the recipes, you know, all of the information, you know, about water or the resources, you know, about water. It was so easy to just plug and play and go. And that studio now only runs the signature program. They stopped all of their other classes, all of their other programs. They only run this and they have a staff now of 32 different instructors who help facilitate this eight week program. I also have worked with a personal training studio and the, what we did with a personal training is we wanted to be able to go into clients' homes. So especially during COVID and working with the clientele that this personal trainer really wanted to work with, we wanted to make sure we could facilitate in-home training. And in order to do that, it was figuring out location, we're going to go to their houses, equipment that he could bring with him in order to do the training, all of the puzzle pieces that put the fitness component together. Now, he didn't have any other expertise. He didn't have any other education on, on nutrition, on behavioral change, on sleep, on wellness, on mindfulness. And he had the same issue that many of us as fitness professionals have and say, I, I can't step out of my scope of practice, so what do I do? So what we did was plugged in other local area partners. So, okay, you don't want to speak about nutrition, but let's get with a local dietitian. And we started hosting Facebook lives for his clients in a private Facebook group every Friday. And we rotated through the aspects that we knew his clients were going to have questions about going back to that idea of what are their pain points? Okay. You can't answer it, but you can still facilitate the answer. You can still be who delivers it. So they always are going to come to him as the end all be all wellness professional, even though technically he was just really strongly aligned in a way that made sense to help his program grow. It was such a pleasure having you on the show today, Jessica. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. I had a blast talking to you today. Yeah. Where have you been? You need to come back and do another episode for us on different content. I would love to. I would love to come back and share even more tips and tricks and truths about business. Absolutely. So tell us just really quickly a little bit about JHM Fitness. JHM Fitness is my consulting business where I help fitness professionals reach their full potential. I do this through one-on-one -on -one consulting, as well as I deliver a blog every week that gives you five tips to time management, marketing, and business. And I also deliver two webinars, two free webinars per month that will dive in deeper to three aspects of marketing or brand awareness or business. And everything I do is geared towards the fitness professional since that's what I know and love the most. Well, we're so glad that you're here. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking time out to educate all of our listeners out there about signature programs. Thank you, Jessica, for being a first time guest on our show. I enjoy discovering new, fresh industry talent, and she certainly has a bright future ahead of her. 
If you would like to reach out to Jessica to learn more about creating a signature program, please visit the show notes at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Or when you subscribe to the best show notes in the podcast world, they are emailed directly to you. Subscribe to the show notes also at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. In 30 seconds, I will introduce you to Scott Ramage, who will change your workload tremendously. Member experience is more than just NPS. With MXM's Member Experience Toolkit, you build a unified view of the member experience, from purchase to onboarding to everyday usage and cancellation. Wire your entire organization with actionable feedback using MXN's Member Experience Toolkit. To find out more, go to mxmetrics.com. Quickfire 5. Put your hands together for Scott Ramage. He is from VAs for Gyms. And now let's find out more about why you should come back next week to hear his episode. Hey, today's industry expert is... Scott Ramage. He is the co-owner of VAs for Gym. He is on our Quick Fire Five circuit for today. So I'm excited to bring him in. Scott, welcome to Quick Fire Five. Thank you, Dory. All right. We're going to find out everything we ever wanted to know about you in five questions. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. The first one is, what is a life lesson you learned from the pandemic? Easy. Don't stop. Uh, Now is the time to turn up the dial and really plan for the other side of uh, whatever's going on. Okay, perfect. Number two, if you could play a character in any movie, what character would it be? So I'd either be the guy in the background, the extra, like sipping a coffee at a coffee shop, or I'd be Jason Bourne because he does everything and he's just incredibly talented. So Okay, so that's two extremes. You're like the guy sitting in the back doing nothing, and then you're the guy that's doing everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah, re- reality versus fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good, good answer. That's a fun one. All right, please complete this statement. Sunday morning, you can find me on a four mile walk with my wife and dog. All right. Every week. Every week? Every week. All right, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Belgian Malinois. Oh, I love those. Needs a lot of walking. Oh, I know this is a side note, but the it was a it was a Malinois that went after uh, Osama bin Laden on the raid with uh, Will Chesney was his handler. So pretty epic. Yeah. It was pretty epic. That's a great book, by the way, everybody out there listening. So that's my book recommendation. Now I'm going to ask you your book recommendation. Can you give us a book that we that all of our listeners out there should read? Well, I learned so much from The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday, just about stoicism and really kind of handling things that are hard and stepping into them and using them as a catapult for success. Great. You know, he was a former guest here on the podcast. I'm going to have to listen to that one. (laughs) All right. And here we go. Finally, here's your chance to pitch to our FBP family why they should come back next week to listen to your episode. Because I think everybody needs to learn to leverage their time and their resources and do what actually gives them energy. Uh, Gym owners, managers got into this to help people. And a lot of times we get stuck in the weeds. So uh, it's my mission to help people running businesses to get out of the weeds and do what gives them energy. Gym owners, department heads, and studio fitness owners, all of you out there that are wearing way too many hats, please come back next week for Scott Ramage's episode called Outsourcing Your Gym Tasks for More Profit or Time. Next week's topic is a good one as Scott Ramage helps gym owners take off some of their hats and discuss the importance of hiring a virtual professional to help with some of the daily tasks. So make sure you subscribe to the show notes on your favorite podcast player, or even better yet, let us do the work for you and we'll send you the show. Subscribe at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Now it's not too late to register for the URSA International Conference and Trade Show coming to Dallas, Texas, October 13th through the 15th. For more information, go to www.ursa.org. Thank you to our founding partner, Active Management, our partners, Keep Me, My Zone, Discover Strength, Drive Team Training, and One Fit Stop, as well as our advertisers, 
Rex Roundtables, MX Metrics, and Vapor Fresh. We believe what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but woven into the lives of others.